What's up guys? Chris from Softly here today to talk to you about the why behind deadlifting. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you're an athlete, a regular person, you find yourself picking things up off the ground and thus creating movement patterns. Just remember, it does not matter how heavy the object is, you are always moving. So when we look at how we pick things up off the ground, whether we're deadlifting, whether we're picking up our child out of a bathtub, whether we're picking our wallet up off the ground or our wounded battle buddy as we're dragging him off the battlefield, ultimately what we are doing is we are picking something up in a vertical plane of motion and we are loading our bodies appropriately. So when we look at common movement patterns, this is a good example of what a deadlift should look like, focused on a loaded posterior chain and a proper hip hinge. Here we look at a very common mistake with a lot of beginner lifters. We look at a rounded spine, or we look at how we improperly loaded and began the movement, creating undue strain and tension on the low back. So when we look at proper deadlift mechanics and how to build these mechanics in our daily lives, what we're ultimately looking at doing is we're looking at bulletproofing our athletes or our people. And we do this by deadlifting. Now, depending on where you're starting from, what we always advocate in our programming is moving from low skill to high skill. Assuming that you have trouble moving heavy amounts of load or you have consistent low back problems, don't shy away from the deadlift modify the deadlift to accommodate your whatever range of motion or starting point that you're at. Furthermore, looking at some supplementary exercises that can help you deadlift better will be a great way to build resiliency in your spine. Let me give you an example. Exercise number one, the hip thrust. The hip thrust is a really good exercise that unloads the low back and builds overall strength in the hips and the posterior chain, which you're gonna need in order to deadlift properly. Secondly, a single leg RDL. When we look at single versus bilateral, unilateral versus bilateral, what we're ultimately talking about is fixing imbalance. And with a single leg RDL specifically, we're talking about this idea of an anti-rotational movement. We want everything to be in a square plane of motion. Many injuries when it comes to deadlift come from this transverse plane or this rotational plane. What we don't want to do in any movement really whatsoever that in any way loads the spine is we don't want to incorporate a twist, right? So building core stability, building posterior chain strength, building strength in the stabilizer muscles along the spine is very important. Also, why this exercise is such a good bang for your buck is you learn how to master this thing called a hip hinge. The hip hinge is a critical aspect of the actual lift itself. If you cannot hinge properly, what can, I can guarantee is going to happen is that something else is gonna have to pick up slack for the unloaded tension in the lower body. So, learning how to hinge properly not only will help you build more strength, allow you to move more weight in the deadlift, it will also save you from many low back problems later on in life. So, when we look at how to modify this lift, going from low skill to high skill, some ways you can approach this, depending on where you're starting from. Number one, we talked about the hip thrust. That's a low skill movement. We talk about rack pulls or block pulls. For many of you guys who follow our programming, sometimes you'll notice that we've modified the starting position of the barbell. Either we've moved it up, or for more advanced athletes, we've in fact moved ourselves up, which lowers the starting position, i.e. starting from a deficit. So if you find yourself in a beginner lifter position, it's not a bad idea to raise the starting position up, which doesn't allow for an increase for a poor starting position. So ultimately, modify this based on your skill level. If you find yourself at a good advanced level ready to move on, now we talk about looking at deficit deadlifts. What we're doing is we're talking about increasing the range of motion and time under tension when you're beginning to pull the bar up. You can modify this even further by modifying your grip, i.e. a snatch grip deadlift. Probably one of the most advanced variations that we can think of is a snatch grip deficit deadlift. Ultimately what you're doing is you're trying to increase time under tension and you're trying to build this ability to maximize your end ranges of motion. So modifying the start position is a great way to accommodate whatever skill level you're at. Again, deadlifts are not something to be avoided. Many people will tell you, do not deadlift, it's bad for you. We very much disagree. 
if you lift incorrectly, it doesn't really even matter how heavy the thing is you're picking up off the ground, it's still a bad movement pattern. So with all of our training, we address our weaknesses. If you find yourself constantly plagued by low back problems, poor spinal or hip stability, this can be a great exercise for you as long as it's accommodated appropriately. For more information, click the red button below that says subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at softleadhq, and we'll hit you with more information next week.